we good. Good to go? We good to go. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Welcome back. Cashy Knuckle Faithful. Bro, we had another good card. UFC Fight Night. Was it UFC Vegas 50? Yes. Fight cool. Night 100 something. <laughs> 200 something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, they change every name. Right. It was a fight night, though. Oh, yeah. Some good moments. Some real good moments from that card. Um, Mo, you caught, did you catch all the prelims? Or where'd you start? I want to say I, I saw two girls fighting, but I don't know who won. And I don't even know which two girls were fighting. I definitely saw when uh, Pereira had his fight. Pereira versus Bruno Silva, right? Yes. So we're on the main card. Wait, what was that, Mark? So, so we're on the main card. I think everyone pretty much saw the main card, but didn't really see the prelims in full. I saw Dustin Poirier's boy take on Schellenberger in the pre um, in the main event, prelim main event, and oh, that's the dude that's uh, that Poirier was um, hyping up the past week, right? Yeah. What weight class I don't, was that? That was 170? Yeah, that, I dude, believe. that dude, he looked pretty big in the videos I've seen with Poirier. Yeah, I think he's, um, like, shorter for the 170 division. I think he's, like, 5'7 or something like that. I'm not sure. I, I, didn't, I didn't see the numbers, but I know the guy he, he fought was, like, a lot taller. And I don't know if it was because that guy was tall or because he was, like, really short. Because, like I said... I didn't get to see the the numbers, well, but in the cage, seventy inches. I was like five ten. Hmm. I, I just woke up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like I'm a little I'm a slow right now. I'm yeah, like five ten. Semi yeah. the Jedi. That's the name of the dude he fought. Yeah. It's like Schellenberger or something like that, right? Yeah, that dude's six one. Okay. Smellsberger. <laughs> Not like smells. It's Smells. 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 Burger. Smells Burger. Smells Burger. The butchering of names continues. Oh yeah, that's what we're known for. Facts. All right, so got- let let me tell you about Pereira. That left hook of his is devastating. He could have put that guy away in the uh, end of the first round. But he survived. I don't know if he's ready for Izzy in MMA. I don't even know if he'll get to Izzy in MMA. Because i I like to see him matched up against Brunson. Because I think he's going to get wrestled to the ground and probably finished. Um... I didn't get to see that fight yet, so I'm still gonna I'm gonna have to rewatch it. But I saw the highlights, and in the highlights, it, uh, both guys showed a lot of toughness. Both uh, Bruno Silva and Alex Pereira, they showed a lot of toughness, and they both showed they can take a shot. Um, again, I, I agree with Mo. I don't think he's ready, not yet. Um, he's gonna need some more experience, and definitely he's gonna need better striking game plan than what he showed on the on last night's card. But again, like all this stuff is matchup based, right? So just because he didn't look good against Bruno doesn't mean he wouldn't look good against Izzy. I just don't think he's ready yet, personally. Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. I think the guys fought twice and I missed both of them. Yeah, he got some. He got a couple knockouts, a couple quick knockouts. He's he looks good. I mean, he's like for a middleweight prospect, I'm on board. But for a middleweight contender, I need more. I want to see more first. I want to see some. Um, one, I want to see a step up in competition, and two, um, I definitely want to see some. I we haven't really seen the middleweight division be flooded with a whole lot of new talent yet. 
every all the other divisions have gotten a shot in the arm. But middleweight, there's probably what four or five guys outside of the top five who even make are making any noise. Let's see. There's a lot of guys that's probably not even ranked. No, you're right. I mean, most of the guys outside of the top five that are making noise are all guys that used to be in the top five or at least just been around forever in the top ten, to be honest. We got a three-way tie for fourth place. Yeah, we do. (laughs) Surprisingly. Oh, man. (laughs) <laughs> but I honestly can't tell you which one of those I think should be an actual number four, to be honest. What are the names? Uh, uh, Costa, Brunson, and Strickland. I, I, I Costa should put Strickland. Uh, probably. Put Strickland you, up there. You put He's, Strickland on four? He's on a winning streak. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, but he hasn't beat anyone in the top ten. What was his last fight? Hermanson. Hermanson, yeah. So he's in the right place, I feel like, but I don't know. It's hard to put him above Brunson and Costa because of who Costa and Brunson have fought, even though their losses are up there. Yeah, I agree with Mark. I'd probably put Costa, maybe Strickland, and then Brunson. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate anyone. Any order that. I mean, look, they're all in the same boat to me. Yeah. Except for the fact that Strickland hasn't gotten the crack at the title yet, and he is on a winning streak. So, to me, they're all in the same – they all get the same grade. Like, if you give them a number grade, like they're all 89 overall. So, it's like 89, 89, 89. But we already saw Costa fight for the title, and we saw Brunson fight for the title or get close to it. And I think Strickland's. It's time for him to start getting some top five matchups. Yes, he probably fighting one of those two. One of those two, yeah. That, those are the ones that make sense. I think Whitaker's mm-hmm. going to fight Vittori. Yeah, that's official now. So Whitaker's fighting Vittori. Well, in June, July. June. June? I like that. I like that a lot. It was a quick turnaround for uh, Whitaker. Yeah, that's why everyone started freaking out over his post. He posted a, um, a photo of himself and called himself Skinny Rob, so everyone thought he was dropping down to 170. Yeah. But he really just meant he had a fight coming up. Yep. Well, at least he has more than 10 days notice, because boy... What we've seen lately in these um, recent scraps is if you got a short notice, you might as well kiss the baby because the last three short notice fights have all gone horribly wrong for the person on short notice. Moicano, most recently, uh, he had the corner, let him, you know, take a beating of a lifetime. And then my boy... Terrence McKinney just came on short notice against Drew Dober, and we saw how that went. We'll talk about that in a second. And then, obviously, a few, um, like a month ago almost now, Bobby Green took on Islam Makashev in 10 days' notice, and he got, like, obliterated. So I, do you think it's the product of just the fact that it's a short notice, or is it opponent-specific? Probably all of it. All those factors. You don't got no real training camp for the guy you're going against now, and then you just fought, so now you got to cut weight again. It's yeah. taxing on the body, man. I think it's a little bit of all of it. And this one, though, I'm going to be honest, Terrence McKenney looked like like he was ready for the fight. Uh, Drew Dober won this off pure just grit. <laughs> like, <laughs> because... I don't know. I, I I could even question if why they didn't stop it for a uh, win for Terrence McKenney a little bit earlier. But hey, Dober fucking fought through and got the win at the end. 
Yes, he did. Um, I didn't get to catch that one, unfortunately. I saw the highlights again, and it's almost exactly as you described it. Like, it looked as if, like, the first round, McKinney came out like guns are blazing, and he could have uh, he could have gotten a finish there, but I, um, Drew Dober was able to survive, and then you know reverse fortunes in the second, and he did get the stoppage. So it, it, the thing is, man, it's it's a tough to turn it around that quickly. Yeah. Like Mo was saying, like you got to get another training camp, you got to dream yourself again. And you just got you just had a fight, so like you know um, that going into any going into any fight, most um, fighters have some kind of you know little bruise or bang or nick or injury or something. Like it's never going to be a hundred percent. So you got to do that again. Coming out of a fight and coming out of a fight, most likely you're going to have something too. So there's a lot of factors in it besides just the opponent. I mean, so I. I'm 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 not worried about Rob. I don't think this is a long. I mean, this is not a short turnaround. Even though it, I mean, it's not like you know, ten days or two two weeks, something like that. He has she he has the opportunity to have an actual training camp. So yeah, this is this is a normal time frame for a lot of fighters. It's just Rob usually takes a lot more time off between fights. It's yeah. it's quicker for him than usual, but a lot of other fighters have made that turnaround quite successfully many, many times. And were there any fights on this card that uh, like stood out to you in your mind as a turning point? As a turning point? Yeah. I mean, the only turning point fight that I could see would be Marlon versus Yong Sedong. Because that's definitely a uh, a fight where Marlon Morale, Morale uh, I can't talk right now. <laughs> One Punch Man is definitely looking at the back end of his career and it's becoming more and more noticeable. And you have a new alpha male calling out Dominic Cruz, so... What's his nope. record against them, man? What's Dom's record against Alpha Male? A lot uh, and two? He's only lost twice to them, right? Yeah. Yeah, because only the first Faber fight and the Dominic nope. Cruz fight. No, Cody. All right, yeah, the Dominic Cruz versus Cody, yeah. yeah. Cody Garbage. So he's many yeah. wins and two. Yes, many wins and two because he, he undefeated about most of them. Yeah, um, well, I, I like. I, I want to talk about the Song Yudong versus um, versus Marlon Moraes fight quickly. I, I this this was like, you know, I was doing a segment with the whole, you know, raging bulls and um, fallen bears. Like, man, that was it in that one fight. Because yeah. Song Yudong is definitely on the rise. That man got legitimate power. In that right hand, um, so thirty five ers got to be on notice. I will say, Morais looked sharp for the first two minutes, but then, true to form, he had some weird moment where he just he he kind of I don't know what I don't know if it's mental or if it's just like maybe he's just done, but he just kind of. Seems like he breaks, and he starts just like going backwards and retreating. It was weird, man, because he had he had some shot. He landed some decent shots on um on Song Yudong, but it wasn't like it wasn't like the normal fight you get from him. It wasn't like how you saw um when when Marlon faced um Cejudo for their interim title. We for the title, I mean, like he he went at Cejudo, and he had Cejudo badly damaged. He don't have that right now. And like in the most like recent action he's had, he's on kind of a streak. He's that's kind of been the thing. Yeah, I think I think he got touched. And I, I don't I honestly don't think he has a chin like he used to anymore. He's very chinny now. 
So he got touched and he started retreating is how I saw that going. And just couldn't come back from it. And he looked very defeated at the end of it. Uh, for a second there, I thought he was about to retire with his gloves both off and in his hands. And it wouldn't have been a terrible decision in my eyes, to be honest. But, hey. You got to remember in that Cejudo fight, too, though. He put it all on... He put Cejudo on blast for, like, a round and a half and then had nothing left. Mm-hmm. He looked sharp. I mean, like I said, coming out, coming in, he had to walk to the cage, all that. He looked looked solid, and he did, like, the first two minutes was strong. And I don't want to say his career is over, but I, I definitely think something has to change. I mean, he did change camps. He was at Tiger Muay Thai um, for this one. So, who knows? I don't know. Maybe it's just – maybe Songy Dong is just that guy. You know what I mean? It might, it might, it might yeah. not – it might not be all Marlon. It might be like, fuck, he's got caught with a good shot. I don't want to give Marlon um, – I'm, I'm not saying he should be done or he should retire, but he's definitely – his stock is definitely falling. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. He's lost four in a row all by KO or TKO. Yep. Yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from right there. Is Given he's fighting it, a lot of killers. Yes, he is, but – when you're trying to compete at that level and you're you're losing by knockout every time, you're you're showing something that is looking like an end of a career. And there's not very many people that come back from four knockout losses in a row very well. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, it's, it's, that's tough right there. That's a tough diet. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a <t> <laughs> yeah. You're eating all the wrong shots. Another turning point fight, I thought, in a career was uh, Khalil Roundtree taking on Carl Robertson. Uh, Khalil um, Robertson was making his 205 debut, right? Is that what they said? I believe so. I know he fought a lot at middleweight. I know he came up to 205 in this fight, but he didn't make two, two, 185. Not, I mean, he didn't make, sorry, 205. I think he came in at like 203. See, man, Roundtree, he's like, if he could stay consistent, man, he could be a top contender in the division. He just wins, lose, wins, lose. So he is consistent. <laughs> well, I guess he can consistently win. <laughs> <laughs> He looked, he looked damn good last night. I say that. Like one thing about Roundtree that has kind of plagued him is um, he seems to be a little bit of a slower starter. Like he'll, he'll start off kind of like methodical and um, almost be a little bit too relaxed in there. But when he hit, when he clipped Robertson, I think, I think it was like a a right hand, dropped him. None of that killer instinct came out. He looked savage in his pursuit for the finish. One of the comments, one of the commentators said that it looked like Carl Robertson owed Khalil Roundtree money or something. Yeah, somebody said that. Yeah, <laughs> bro, that 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 was brutal. I, I was I was kind of I rewatched that sequence. He hit Robertson with at least twelve shots. I mean that 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 kick to the body on the ground was like the chef's kiss. That was yeah. Wow, that was beautiful. You don't really see that that often. I mean, we saw Anderson Silva knee Chael Sonnen in the body in transition, but you rarely see roundhouse kicks to the body to a ground opponent. And the the technique was flawless. Like he hit all body, and it was a crushing blow. Like that that folded on me. Like cause he was still fighting back until that. And then everything yeah. else was kind of academic. <laughs> he was already done after that. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Roundtree just fucking brutalized him at the end of that. I mean, he got hit with a couple good shots, especially a couple good knees coming in with mm -hmm. his low stance that he had. But so Robinson had his moments. But yeah. It did look like that. I can't I can't argue that comment at all where it looked like uh, Robertson owed him money, and he was coming for it. 
with that vicious, brutal <laughs> attack. Bro, that was pure violence, bro. Like, that, that, <laughs> yeah. was, that was the only fight that I stood up on my seat and was just like, hey, yo. Because he looked at look, everything he was throwing. Like, you know how you, you see a person's face when they're throwing shots? And most of the time, it's kind of like they try to keep the poker face. Like, oh, I'm not too pressed. Man, Khalil Ramchi looked like he wanted he, he they look like he owed him some money, like he stole his honey bun or something. But I would give Khalil, I would say Khalil Roundtree definitely, um, that might be a turning point for him because this 205 division at the top, I mean, there's only really three guys. I mean, you got Blahovich, you got, um, Dom, not Dominic Graves, let me get that out of my mind. You got Jan Blahovich, who's at what, number two now or three? He's one. He's number one? Mm-hmm. I thought number one was Yuri Prohachka. Two. No, he's number two. He's number two? So then that makes then that makes Alexander Rakic number three then, right? Mm-hmm. Right. All right, so that's the, you, you got those three guys, and you figure that they're going to be all in that bubble for the, the contenders in the, in like uh, the nearest few, in the near future. But then outside of that, there's a lot of question marks. And I think some of those question marks can be answered by guys like Khalil Roundtree. Um, like Mosey said, if they can string together some wins and get some consistency going in the win column, this could be a turning point for him if he can string together some wins. He can get into that contender mode, contender um, frame. Yeah, I mean, he already has a win over Paul Craig. So... Mm, he still has Johnny Walker ahead of him, which he has a loss to. Jamie Crute's a tough out. It, it would be a tough, tough rise for him. I think I don't think he stacks up well against a lot of those guys. But if he if he can pull it all together and bring that violence every time, I think he can get a good streak on him. And I'd say he could probably touch the top ten. I'd say give him a run back with Johnny Walker. At this yeah. point, that's yeah. not a bad one. Yeah, that'd be good because both like both guys are um, they're in need of it. Like like he said, um, this this would be like what the doctor ordered if he can, you know, for Khalil Roundtree's case, if he can get that that win back. You know what I mean? And Johnny Walker, he could obviously use a win. He's been getting like you know, it's been rough for him too. So, this would be an interesting like rematch for both guys. It would be a different rematch too because Johnny Walker is definitely not the same Johnny Walker that Roundtree fought. Roundtree yeah. fought the explosive, wild and crazy Johnny Walker before and, the uh, uh, injury to the shoulder doing the worm. Correct before the worm. Was that the fight he he did the worm? Mm, or was it the next no, one after so. that? I think it was the next one. I can't remember which fight he did the worm, but I don't think it was Roundtree. Roundtree's the I remember that that finish sequence. He hit Roundtree with an elbow in the clinch and, and straight dropped him. That was that was a wow, beautiful Muay Thai. Shit was awesome. So yeah. you guys I wanna think, say um, he hurt himself after the spawn span fight. No, it was way before that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I can't remember either. Um, Sadiq Yusif took on um, Alex Caceres in a featherweight bout. Superman Sadiq, bro, he looked different. Did you you get to see that one? I didn't really uh, pay too much attention to that one. Really? Yeah. That was a, that was probably that should have been fighting tonight in my opinion. I know Bruce Leroy is a tough one. And yeah, he hung in there the whole way, right? Yeah. He did. It was a good one. It was a good fight. Like they, it was some back and forth for a while. Casteris had a shot until Sadiq introduced his grappling, his wrestling, and he's apparently he got good wrestling. Yeah, he has good wrestling. Uh, I think the turning point of it really just was. Caceres was eating up all them leg kicks, and 
that's basically what was happening. Yusuf was trying to box with him, kept hitting air, and not getting any clean shots off. But that leg was right there all night long. So he just kept picking away at them legs, started slowing down his movement. Uh, and then, yeah, and started introducing some wrestling later on. It was a good scrap, though. I mean, Caceres is still that fucking scrappy, just a tough out for anyone type guy. He always been. Oh, yeah. And like you said, those leg kicks were nasty. Mm-hmm. I mean, he like he hit him with all the leg kicks. Inside, outside, calf, everything. Right. And Dang, Caceres might really. Win streak, too? Dang yeah. Caceres, yeah, it was I on a know. four or five fight win streak. Yeah. He was killing it. That was a good one. That was a good scrap. Like, and, and even Caceres landed some real good shots on uh, Sadiq. Like he that, he was landing like that that straight right that, that straight right down the pipe. He kept landing that over and over. Um, he wasn't really it wasn't really doing a lot of damage. He was hitting them with uh, that check, a check hook as well. But it wasn't more, it wasn't like he was loading up on this stuff. It was um, more just like tagging them. But he was, he was getting he had some moments. Uh, Caceres did. But ultimately, I, I agree with the decision. I think um, yeah. Sadiq got a, a three round UD, mm-hmm. and I agree with the decision. I thought it was, I thought it was right, even though I did bet on Caceres. I I thought there was that that was really good refereeing. I'm mean, really good judge judgment call, and I feel like the judges were kind of on today. They did a they did a really good job. They didn't have to work do too much work because there was lots of TKOs and KOs. Yeah, like I said, the surprising part was Caceres was winning the boxing matches all day long. I mean, you got 43 significant strikes to the head versus 18, where Caceres was dominant there. But then at the same time, you have 35 leg strikes, significant leg strikes to nine mm-hmm. on the bottom end. Yeah. So, but it, yeah, I. I don't know if I would have gave him all three rounds. I probably would have gave him. I would have gave Caceres probably at least the first round, but I'm not angry at it either. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I thought that too at first. I was like, you know, it was. I, I didn't think that Caceres really. I mean, the first two rounds, even though I think um, you can argue a case for giving him one, they were just so close. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm not really angry at it, but I probably could have. Get you probably could have gave Caceres the first round because he looked like he was just. Frustrating use of in the first round. Yeah. Um. You y'all want to move on to the light to the main? I, I didn't was, get to watch that one. Oh my goodness. Um. Well, was it good? I will say this. I thought. I, did you get to see it, Mark? Yeah, I saw it. I was. I was having a hard time staying up during the first two rounds, at least. You basically you got in that fight. It was. Until like the last two minutes of the fourth, I believe, it was basically a very methodical, heavy sparring match. Yeah. Between, in, 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 in kickboxing. I think one of the comments in the earlier rounds was, if we keep going this way, we'll have as many punches as minutes in the fight. Yeah, they both were... Wow. One shot, one shot at a time, and one. I mean, obviously for Ankalaev, it makes sense. Like Santos can like knock your block off with one shot, so you can't be throwing combos and at the risk of getting countered. And Tiago was throwing some he- and missing some heavy shots. Everything like he was throwing. Them. Well, Ankalaev was he was landing when he did throw, but he was really throwing like he was being his more patient self. Mm-hmm. He landed some good shots, um, and then his wrestling would look good at the at the end. He probably could have um, got the finish if he would have done engaged with wrestling more often in the like whole fight because he got Santos to the ground and he couldn't get back up. But there was only a minute left. Well, I think it's awkward in this fight because we've always questioned. Santos is cardio because he's more of an explosive. He'll explode on you and then kind of like back up for a while. 
But he was going so slow and just throwing one shot at a time during this whole fight. And then I think at one point in the third round, he did explode through a combination, was very successful with it, but then seemed immediately gassed out right after. Like, he was noticeably gassed. And I was just like, wow. Like, what was wrong with him in this camp? Like, I did want to question whether he, if he was, like, in full strength or not. I agree with that. It was really, um, like you said, outside of that flurry, Santos didn't really offer a whole lot. I mean, he backed up most of the fight. He did a good job with evasive movement and not being able to just you know, walk down because he would, you know, take um, his steps to the left or right and avoid being just like pent against the cage. But basically, it was just a dance of Uncle Live going forward, landing a few shots here and there, pop shots, in the round. And it, 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 that was just the case the whole fight until, like you said, Santos just turned it on and went, went after him. And he 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 dropped him. He dropped um, Uncle Live at one point. Uh, he hit him with like a, I think it was a right hand, caught him in the top of the head, and like fo- I was like, holy shit! But the round was over. It was like not much time left in the round on both guys' like chance to finish. Because when Uncle right. got when Uncle Live got Santos down in the fourth, he could have done a lot of damage, and he was doing some, but there was just no time. And I was curious why his corner wasn't just like, yo, this. And get another takedown. Get it in the middle of the ring. Like in the fifth round and just close the show. But I think they were so confident that they were ahead on points from like round one to then that they were like just kind of like, just keep doing what you're doing. There's no need to like risk getting knocked the fuck out to make a statement. But if you're going to yeah. call out the champion at the end, you should have made a statement. Yeah, uh, I don't think that was a championship call out type performance on either guys end. Like it was pretty lackluster for the most part. You think he'll fight Anthony Smith next? Does Rackage have a date? He was supposed to fight uh Jan. Rakic and Blahovich? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think mm-hmm. uh he had Blahovich gotta get neck surgery or something or he has a neck injury right now. Something like that. Why wouldn't you put Uncle Laugh versus um? Because I mean, he did win, and he is streaking. He's seventeen and one. He's on so, a long streak. He probably got the longest streak in the division right now. I would imagine. I why, why not give him um uh Alexander Rakic, someone in the top five. Top. Three. I mean, if Jan's out for neck surgery and Rakic is open, that's a good fight. Because the only other options he has is Rackage or Anthony Smith. I I don't I like the Anthony Smith um, matchup for sure. I like the matchup, but for Uncle Iav's like title hopes, I don't think that he would still need one more fight. I would assume, but if he beats, if he were to beat Alexander Rackage, he's on the short list. Because even if he beats Rackage, he's on the. I think he he gets a title shot of right. winner of whoever. At the very least, he'll take over the spot and fight Jan whenever Jan's ready, and then that immediately gives you a title shot. I agree with that, man. But I honestly think he could springboard off Anthony Smith and get a title shot. Also, that's where the light heavyweight division is right now. It's kind of wide open. Anyone could. St- Flip right in there. That is true. The division is it's open. It's open, open. Yeah, thanks to um Glover, man. Glover knocked off Blahovich, and now it's like you know how you when you play Sonic the Hedgehog, and like you got like all the rings, but then you get like hit by one of them things, and the rings just fly everywhere. They everywhere, bro. They got like it's that division is wide open. There is no um. If you want a title shot and you want a chance for it, just put together some wins because, I mean, who knows how much more Glover has. And then at the top, you know you know that Blahovich is a tough out. You know that Alexander Rakic is extremely talented. And Yuri Pahashka looks like the real deal. So we're gonna, we don't know who's going to be the champion by the time uh, Ankalaev gets to that point. He's Dakistani, he right? 
That's a good question. Or is that he, I don't know. Or is he like a Russian guy? It, it, mean, it, in his profile, it does just say Russia. And you ever play Risk? Yes. You know that little spot on the map in Risk that doesn't really exist? But we basically just call it. It's like supposed to be like Russia. He is Dagestan. It's like, is he? It's not. It doesn't say that in his profile. You on the website? Yeah, I'm on his website. The UFC website? Not on the UFC website. Oh. Yeah, I'm, on, on, I'm on. I'm on, on his. Yeah, Dagestan, Russia. I didn't want to judge the beard. Well, he, he got a stash, so you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> you know how it works with those guys. Correct. It said he's from Mahachkala, Russia. Oh, the UFC lying again. They might. I'm saying, like, I think they're just lumping all those guys in because <laughs> they profile them. No, I mean, like, why? Be, I'm sure, like, why would he not be in Dagestan training with Dagestanis if he's from Russia? Does it make sense to him not? It'd be like the same, like, guys, all ATT guys. He doesn't have to be from, like, what, South Florida, I guess? He doesn't have to be from there. Oh, no, 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 they're fighting out of. I mean, I mean, um, what's up? Yeah, hey, that's what you mean. Like, they're fighting out of uh, Coconut oh, Creek or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. I, I, but, yeah. I thought you meant, like, is he from Dagestan? Like, is he, like, Born like bred in the mountains, I don't think that's the case. I think he just trains there. But yeah, twenty nine years old, so I mean, he looked good, man. I think he's on this. I, I feel like he should um, one more fight, one one more. If you'd even won here convincingly, like you'd have, like you know made a statement and took the like a TKO victory. From Tiago, that would give him a, a huge boost and then an ar- argument for the next shot. Because really, outside of, I, I don't think Alexander Rackers deserves a shot yet. I think he's still one fight away. Well, it was that was his his fight. His one get fight. The, uh, yeah. the title. Oh, Blah- Blahovich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you yeah, beat I, the former champ, you get a title shot usually. Yeah, I agree with that. Um. Ashy knuckle moments. Anybody got one? Sadong. Songy Dong. Yeah. Oof. He he one punch man. One punch man. Correct. It was a beautiful combo too. It was. It really was. That that uppercut at the end though. Chef's perfect. Kiss. Mm, mm, mm. That boy good. I was. I would say there's that, and then the round tree kick to the body would be the Ashi knuckle moments. Yeah, that was a that was a mean right hand that started that sequence too. That's everything he threw at after that had bad intentions, bro. He for real, it, he looked like he finally caught that dude that was in his girl's DMs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was like. I see your ass now. You guys want to talk about the UK card later on, or you want to talk about some of it today? We can just catch it later on. I mean, yeah. we have and we have a lot of upcoming stuff, so we can we can jump on with that. We can lump in with that UK card, but I think we should just save it for later. All right. All right. Oh, how was the the Eagle FC? How was that? Oh man, I thought it was I thought it was strong. I, it totally I, slipped my mind that it was going on Friday night. I totally forgot. I was Khabib might. I was asleep. Khabib, yo, man, he might have something, bro. That might be the next big thing. It could be the next. You know how like all these other organizations are kind of like vying for that third spot. Yeah. Between UFC and Bellator. Yeah. I think uh, they might get. It. They might get. They might get it. They're gonna get all the talent. Are they only they, doing shows in America, or is it all over? I think it's in Miami. Okay. I think I think they, that wasn't the first one. I think the first one was overseas, though. If he's yeah. smart, 
he'll try to pick up a lot of the M1 guys, since M1 apparently doesn't exist anymore. The card was good, and they had a lot of former UFC fighters like on that card. Um, I think Lineker was on there. I think he. I think he competed. Did he? Was he on there? Mm, I can't remember. There was a. Um, I know JDS just signed with them. Yeah, he he's what? competing for. It. Yeah, he's a wrestler too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's in the AEW, I believe. Yeah. With Paige Van Zandt. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the name of the... There was another lightweight. Like, like, like I'm sorry. I think it's a 45er. But their weight classes are different. Because they they're they doing it every 10 pounds. They're doing exactly what, we, what we've been talking about. Yes. There. They're doing it every 10 pounds. Instead of... So it's like 35 or 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75... 85, 95, 205 heavyweight. Oh, so they haven't. Yeah, they have like all. It's like every ten pounds. So they have. They had a lot of. They had a lot of fights. Um, and the sixty-five pound thing looks good. Hector Lombard just signed with them too. Oh, nice, nice. I'm assuming he's fighting at eighty-five or two hundred five or ninety-five. Ninety-five. Yeah. He might do ninety-five. Yeah. I think ninety-five would be a good class for him. Like super middleweight division. That's tight that they mm-hmm. got that that division right there. Yeah, man. That's I think it's a I think it's a great thing. Um, there's so many athletes that can that are in that range that don't like wait like cutting to 55 kills them, but going 175 is too much. Like 175 is too heavy. They're they're competing with guys <clears throat> that are like now the 175 guys are. I think it's the guys who were at 170 that could barely make 170, that extra five pounds might be just the right thing. So I, I'm, I'm all in favor of it. And the production looked good. Um, I think it was uh, Sun and Bisbing, and who else was on the the and it, uh, Usman. What? They're they're oh well, I get it. It's you know it's him, so they won't be it's as strict. Big. Yeah, they won't be as strict. I get it. Yeah, I mean, you I think can the, catch like Bisbing and them on a Bellator broadcast. It, I, I think I, I, I might be wrong about that, though. No, you I might be right it. about that because if you notice that during this this fight card, we only had Paul Felder and that Brandon guy. We didn't have any of the other announcers. Like there was only two there. I know for sure Usman was there, and I think. It was either Stunning or Bisbing and not both. But it could have been both. But also, I was under the influence. It was Friday <laughs> night, and I was excited to see Kevin Lee and Diego go at it. How was the fight? Overall, it was what you expect. Like, I thought Kevin Diego Lee would be done, like, pretty much. Yeah, he, I thought he would just like, run through Diego. Um, but Diego did catch Kevin in the very first opening sequence, the first strike he landed, and blew his knee out. So Kevin basically fought with one one leg the whole fight, and the, and the commentators kind of made fun of it. It was like he had a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest, and Kevin Lee was that one-legged man, and he still kicked ass. Because he – Diego really didn't do much. He couldn't, he couldn't do much because Kevin was all over him. He looked sharp. I don't know where they're doing all the fights from, but apparently that was Eagle FC 46, so. 46? Yeah. That was, for me, that was Eagle FC 1. <laughs> I remember one happening, because I remember one happening a while back, and I was just like, oh, okay, he's he's just making a... 46? Kind of. Yeah, but they're at 46 is. Maybe that's just what they're calling it, but this is fucking Eagle FC 46, all or nothing. <laughs> that's what it's called. There's only 52 weeks in a year. Has it been that long? I guess. Uh, I guess so. It's on the app, too, so that's pretty It's pretty neat, and it's it's pretty straightforward. Very easy to kind of, like, navigate. It wasn't... I didn't have any trouble at all, like, putting it on and then um, figuring out how to do everything. It was very seamless. 
Yeah, I'll check out this app, this FLX cast. Yeah. Super easy. Like yeah. yeah. Some of those apps are kinda like like the Triller and uh even ESPN Plus first started. It was kinda like like why is it so there's so, so much like you should just be able to it should be seamless. You should be able to just go to the fight. I thought I was getting like um tricked at first because it went straight to the fight. Like it it went like load the app and it starts showing it. I'm like, like is this like a a build up to the fight? Like cause they do they do have like a little bit of production in there where they have you know they show the, the fighter and they show like their name and they start talking about them and they they have the little cut ups to like the interviews and then they start walking to the cage. I'm like oh shit wait this is right now this is happening like Diego's walking to the cage right now this is like oh like, okay. Well, you gotta remember, Khabib doesn't want any of the bullshit. He just wants to get straight to the action. <laughs> this is number one bullshit. So is Diego still competitive? Yes, he did look competitive. He did. Um, he was tough. He definitely landed some good shots. He kept. Uh oh. Is that just Brian? It's not me this time. The, the, the aliens got Brian, man. <laughs> they got him this time. They got him. Yo, he turned into a robot. <laughs> He's frozen. Yo, check the YouTube. He's frozen. Cut down the auto tune. He'll be back <laughs> shortly. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm actually looking at the lineup. They've had quite a few fights. Yeah. I don't know if these are just single fights or if these are all fucking cards. Hey, is, uh... Do they have a champion? Like, for each weight weight class? Or no? I don't think they do yet. Okay. I think that's gonna be... In the future... But yeah, like I, I just signed up for that FLX cast thing, and I'm looking at all the previous fights because you can go back and watch them all. And yeah, they they got quite a roster on here. So they they're legit. I mean, they're starting like every company starts, where they got to pick up a lot of the older names the the some of the wash ups but that have name value but at the same time he's also doing the right thing and picking up people like Kevin Lee who's still young that's that's a worse photo to freeze up on than the last one yawning <laughs> I think he's trying to scream at us I don't, I don't know if he's yawning, laughing. <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit. They got Ray Borg. They got yeah. Ray Borg. They got you Tyron Spong. Ray Borg? Yeah, I didn't know Long, that. long time ago. He's the one that was having uh, issues with his child, right? Uh, You're back. Maybe. Hola, como estas? <laughs> <laughs> Having some technical difficulties, boy. We going through it. Yes. Yeah, man, I don't know what the bro. Like even my video looks like. Right now, you look like a ghost, like a ghost. or something. Yeah, yeah bro, you look like, like a ghost. For real. Let the end of the world was the last thing I seen. Oh, yeah, you gotta remember they good. got your boy Rashad Evans too. Oh yeah, Rashad won his last fight. Mm -hmm. What? What? Hold on. What was he fighting at? One ninety five or one eighty five? Let me check. I would. I'm gonna say ninety five, given his age. Just off the. That's just. Let me put that in the win. It doesn't tell me unless I start the video. <clears throat> well, either way. Yeah, they got 
they got an interesting cool. lineup. So it might be going on. Maybe the UFC could learn some things from uh, them. I hope I think that the weight divisions blow up, and then other uh, other companies like the UFC take notice of that. At you least, at the very least. You don't think that the UFC is involved with them? Like maybe no. like like not in the sense of um, like they have deals. I mean, they have like an actual contract or whatever. But they're not. They seem to be pretty friendly with like, 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 like I said, like Kamaru was there co- commentating. Kamaru's the UFC's champion. You know what I mean? Like they, <clears throat> and I feel like they might have. They might be like a little. They might be kind of friendly to them as far as like, that might be where they experiment with certain stuff. Like, see, like you, they have <clears throat> the introduction of these um, ten pound weight classes, and UFC might be looking at that as a. Let us see how this goes. And maybe we will, like, adopt it. The only pushback I have to that is I feel like if they were doing that and they were trying anything like that, they would do it like they do all the other divi- all the other companies that they do that with, all their feeder companies and everything, and they'd be on Fight Pass. Like, since, since Eagle FC is not on Fight Pass at all, I, I I think they're just letting him do his thing. They're just letting Habib do his thing. Dana White's just not going cutthroat on Habib because he likes Habib. Okay. Well, I hope so because I like this this new league. I think every time um, there's another outlet, another major outlet <clears throat> for talent to kind of shine through, it's only it's best for the sport. So I hope um, Eagle FC takes off and does well. Me too. You guys ready to call it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. On that note, zip it up. Zip it out. Zippity-doo-dah, bye-bye.